How's everybody doing? Yeah, well, welcome to the uh, DIY hero's journey, turning your fandom into creation panel. Uh, I have to say it's really uh, pleasing to see some people actually in the room. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I tend to apply to about a hundred festivals a year, and uh, we've done this at Star Wars, a Star Wars festival, Force Fest, a fan run fest at the start of COVID online. I've done it also at a music festival, but uh, I applied to this just thinking, why don't I try to break out of the Star Wars stuff I usually play into the wider geek fandom thing, and I just thought I'd apply to this to say I did. I never expected to get this. <laughs> Uh, it's great, so here we are. Uh, my name's Din, and uh, the, my, I go by um, F105 now, which is either a performer name or a, or a uh, band name that plays both and tour around the world. I've been to Europe, the States, Star Wars celebrations, headline gigs there, and uh, it's where I met all these wonderful people. Um, well, except for two, but we'll get to that. Uh, I... Um, yeah, so it's just, I didn't really expect to get this, and it's been, been a great surprise to actually get it, so. Yay. Thank you. Well done. Way to go, Dan. Chase the dream. Yeah. Well, I'm a sensation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the panel description, description said, uh, Star Wars fan music sensation, and uh, Don't get delusions if 10 people is a sensation, I, I have delusions of grandeur right now. <laughs> 12. <laughs> uh, so, what, what we're, what's going to happen is, the most amazing thing happened in my life. After about 15 years of slugging it away in music, making about five albums um, with my little label, I'm on a little label, but not really connecting to people, like finding an audience. I, I was asked by a very popular podcast in about 2013. It was one of the most downloaded podcasts on the iTunes at the time. I do owe them everything, and because they started this for me, they asked me to write them uh, a Christmas song, and I said I, I. They did a Christmas podcast every year, and I was like, I want to make you art, <laughs> so I can't make you a Christmas song now. I'm not going to do like the normal Star Wars parody. And uh, a year later, it hit me. I've been studying jo Joseph Campbell's hero's journey through Star Wars all my life, and I knew a lot about it, and George Lucas basically wrote his second draft to A New Hope. Do we have fans of the original Star Wars movie in the room? Yeah, so George Lucas, who was a student of Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey, said, why don't I rewrite my script to include the steps of the hero's journey, and as an experiment, he actually said, like, I just thought I'd do it as an experiment, you know, uh, to see if it still worked. <laughs> and we all know it worked beyond anyone's wildest imagination, including his. So then I realized, oh, why don't I rewrite some songs uh, using the Hero's Journey steps? And I did that. I never put any literal Star Wars words in the song. I wanted it to feel like you're on your hero's journey in a Star Wars sonic landscape and you were on your journey. Mm -hmm. So I made them that song and then it, it blew up with their audience. They had like 20,000 listeners an episode, 100,000 a month. And uh, they invited me to Celebration to play their party when they were hosts of uh, one of the main stages in Celebration 2015 uh, Anaheim. And I played the bash and it was funny because I had an iPod going for my backing tracks and the host hit the thing, and it stopped, and I was so, in the moment, just like, down on myself and what just happened, because the room was packed with people, and they're all looking at me, and like, I traveled all the way here to play for, actually play for people, and instead of gigs in Toronto with no people, and uh, I just said, start the song again. And they started the song again, and when I got to the chorus, the whole room sang the song back to me. And that's when I realized, Okay, this hero's journey stuff works, uh, not only for art, but it helped me, like Joseph Campbell was a student of Carl Jung, who's, who was teaching that if he connected his patients to the hero's journey, it inspired them to face the challenges of life, of life better. And Freud didn't like it, because Freud was trying to get the medical community to take this stuff seriously, and then Carl Jung was going on about archetypes and myths to help patients. So. It can help you in your creative journey and your personal life, and that's what I found, and that's why we're here. 
here today. Right on. Thanks for that. So now it's time to uh, introduce our fellow panelists. So. Perfect. Karim, do you want to take the lead on that and introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. Hello, everybody. My name is Kareem. Thank you. Whoa. Uh, I'm Jody. I'm, I'm just playing the box today. <laughs> the, Hi. The, 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 the Kahan is it called? Kahan? Kahan. 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 Yeah. yeah, so we have our, our percussionist over there, and my name is Alia, and uh, I'm a, a pretty much a noob. Uh, to the fandom, but I'm excited to share a little bit about myself and uh, we'll have then Kareem and Jody share a few things about themselves. Welcome! Welcome to our panel! Excited to see you. So, uh, a bit about myself. I'm a Pakistani Muslim female cosplayer and educator by profession and I work in digital marketing. Uh, I'm a painter and during the pandemic I started pottery and uh, my interest lies in the overlap between culture and cosplay mainly. And maybe, Karim, you can share uh, a little tidbit about yourself? Sure, my name is Kareem. I'm so excited about conventions. I've been coming to these things since I was like 15 years old. And I'm, I love seeing how the community has grown and changed over time. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Perfect. And then, uh, Jody, did you want to share a little tidbit about yourself? Mention the comedy. <laughs> um, so I'm actually a musician, and this is my first time at Comic-Con. And I'm You've taken your to... first step into a larger world. Yeah, so everything's new to me, so it's nice to be here. I love the costumes. And... I'm going to warm welcome for Jody. <laughs> Perfect, all right. So uh, we're going to have Din uh, talk us through the hero's journey and what the hero's journey is, and then we can jump right into um, our journeys and how they're parallel with the hero's journey. Okay, so one other thing before I start is um, we, Dominic Jones from a podcast called The Star Wars Underworld. Any listeners in here? Yeah. Awesome. So he's got COVID. Uh, don't worry, I haven't seen him in a few weeks. That's so our man, Dom. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that, I think, in the road of trials today, because it was certainly a trial to uh, try to do this panel without him. Um, our teammate, Dominic, who really does so much hard work, he makes it all kind of really easy for us. And uh, so, here we are. And uh, there's Dom. On the... Well, also Ahsoka, who's also... Dominic. I just want to test this. Dominic, can you, if you say hey, something, can I hear you? I do. Oh, hi, everybody. I, I wish I could be there with you all, but um, we're trying this. It's not quite a hologram, but uh, it's as close as we're going to get today, I think. Dom, do you want to share a tidbit? Work on your force projection. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dominic, do you want to share a tidbit or two about yourself with our wonderful audience here today? Oh, uh, sure. Um, as Din mentioned, I, I do a podcast called The Star Wars Underworld. I've been doing that for... Uh, uh, almost ten years now, and it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we've we've been uh, we've covered just some of the best times in Star Wars. You know, whatever you whatever you think of the new content coming out, we've had a lot of fun covering it. The stuff we like and the stuff that you know maybe doesn't live up to our expectations all the time. So it's been it's fun, and uh, I, I'm really sad that I'm not there because I think this is the first uh, Toronto Comic Con that I've missed since uh, something like 2013. So this is a uh, this is a nice uh, middle ground. I've been happy, Don. Thank you. All right, let's get into the hero's journey. So this is also my first time using a PowerPoint. This is going awesome. Okay, so this is what uh, our these are. This is from Dom's notes. Um, I'm actually going to just drop the notes and make this quick. Everyone thinks of the hero. Any people in here familiar with the hero's journey from studying Star Wars? Okay, so you know how they always talk about the steps. When Joseph Campbell wrote the book, he basically had 17 sections. So they called that 17 steps. And then someone distilled it into 12. And then they started talking about the steps for storytellers. And people think about it as a PDF or a web page with the steps. Except Joseph Campbell was studying the entire history of mythology. And he found that everything kind of fit into the structure, but some stories were only some parts of it. Very rarely was it the whole thing. The important part is what phase and what is it really telling you about the human condition. And it's, Joseph Campbell was a poet and a shaman, in my opinion. He, he actually really was a spiritual weirdo. He lived in this building in the States that had 
uh, a lot of poets and this, this famous Russian guy who was advising World Council on how to create one world government. Seriously. <laughs> but good one world government that sought to unify the world to give all the people of the world power and have their, their needs met through, through democracy. That's a whole other thing. There's forces for a good one world and forces for a bad one world. But we won't get into that. But that was Joseph Campbell. And his hope for myth, and studying all the myths from all the world religions and mythologies, was that he was going to find the common grounds that united everyone for the world. So he actually said the future symbol of mythology for the planet should be the circle, which is the globe, to show how we're all one. Um, so I just want to, I'm condensing Dominic's notes here into saying that the important thing is that stuff. The really profound, meaningful stuff that binds us and shows you where you're at in your journey and helps you to meet it. It doesn't really matter about the steps. Um, so we can distill that into three phases, which would be departure, phase one. Uh, departure would be where you get the call to adventure, you know, like uh, um, Obi-Wan calls Luke, or, you know, Hagrid comes for Harry, all, all that stuff, or Gandalf for Frodo, uh, you know, Maz for Rey, and uh, or the Rebel Alliance for Jyn or so. And uh, so then the next, then once you choose to go on that, you're in phase two initiation, which is all the trials and all the hardships, and then you find, you achieve your goal, but through achieving your goal, you find uh, a deeper insight into the human condition, which is basically that we're all connected. We're all one. And I'll bring up a Joseph Campbell clip for that later. And then phase three is your return to come back and show your community, whether it's local, national, global, or galactic. Yeah. So the hero's journey isn't just a journey that Luke Skywalker went on. Essentially, the, like, the idea is we all are on our hero's journey. Um, and the changes that we go through, that's reflected in the journey itself. That is the journey, the changes that we go through, the struggles that we endure. Um, and it's something that kind of brings all of us together. It's a collective experience as well as an individual experience. Uh, we want to talk about journeys that Kareem, myself, and Dean have been on. and then how we've uh, incorporated that into our artistic practice. So uh, in this case, it's cosplay. Uh, with me, hopefully one day might be pottery and we have music. Um, so there's uh, you know, different ways we manifest our journey. And then hopefully, um, the idea is, is that you will answer that call in your life and, uh, and go on your own journey, or you're probably already on your own journey at one of the three stages that Din spoke about. Um, so, Dane, we're going to start with you, and uh, I'll ask you to tell us a little bit about how you were first introduced to the hero's journey. I'm sorry, Dom, I didn't mean to hurt you. And, uh, are you okay there? And uh, what inspired you uh, to insert that into your songwriting and your musical practice? Well, I don't want to, just for time, I, I think I kind of pre preemptively uh, discussed all that already in my intro sure. um, with the Joseph Canvas from Star Wars and then putting it into this song. So uh, I'll, get, I'll get through this slide really quick. You can go on Spotify and I have seven albums for my two acts, The Souls and F-105. And I, around the fourth album is when I was intentionally putting, putting it into my songs. But before then, I realized it was already in my song. So I think my playlist that goes through kind of the whole hero's journey is at, at about 40 songs. So let's not linger on that. But you can check that out when you have time. Although Neil Young won't want you to because he hates Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'm gonna. I'm going to talk about the departure. I'm going to take my gauntlets off, just because they're gauntlets and they're not needed for a panel. Um, the departure is is the initiation, the point in in the journey when when you begin, and um, it's it's the point that leads to this like profound change that we have. So. I want to speak about the, the initial resistance. That's part of the official narrative of the hero's journey. Um, I experienced this resistance myself, which I will speak to later. Um, but the resistance is understood as the psyche, psyche just uh, preparing itself to go on this journey. And it could be conscious for some people, it could be unconscious. For me, it was very conscious. And then um, that leads to a transformation or a realization, hey, you've left Kansas. 
And uh, I'd, I'd like to cite a quote by Joseph Campbell. He wrote, not all who hesitate are lost. The psyche has many secrets in reserve, and those are not disclosed unless required. Um, and that'll be our segue into Din and Jody performing Rebel Girl. Uh, hopefully they'll speak to a few of their influences while writing Rebel Girl, as well as how it relates to the hero's journey and the idea of following your bliss. So take it away. I just want to say that um, this song was my attempt after the first kind of song that worked. Uh, this was around the era of The Force Awakens in Rogue One. And, uh, and my, my niece, who was like 11 at the time, got into Star Wars, and I just wanted to write a song to see if uh, I can connect to this new generation of Star Wars fans that were getting more diverse. And it's called Rebel Girl. Rebel Girl. <laughs> say anymore. I think I, that song that did it. So, hand it over to you, Alia. Thank you, Dean. Thank so, you. 
Uh, next, we're going to ask Karim to speak about uh, his call to adventure and the call that led him to cosplay and embody both Bodhi and Ray. So, handing it over to Karim. Sure. First of all, thank you, Jimmy. Awesome. 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 So, yes, the call to adventure. My call to adventure came in a very literal way from a phone call from my buddy Dan. <laughs> Right over there. So thank you, Dan and Reno, for starting Order 416. Oh. Woo thank you, Greg. Order 416 is all about empowering people to feel welcome, to feel brave, even if they're alone, just to just express and be themselves, in this case through cosplay. And Dan called me one day, and he's like, dude, there's a new Rogue One behind the scenes picture. You should be Bodhi. And for some reason, I hadn't even thought of it yet. It took a literal call to adventure for him to say, hey man, look, a brown guy with long hair and a beard. And let's be honest, that doesn't happen very often in the white media of the West. If there is a brown guy on TV with long hair and a beard, let's just be honest. It's usually the bad guy, right? And it's very damaging to have those types of stereotypes in the world. So I had a little bit of refusal to the call, to be honest. I'm like, wait, wait, this is a behind-the-scenes picture. He's wearing the Imperial logo. Let me see who this guy is. Because I take cosplay in a way that I really attach a personal connection to the characters. And I like to cosplay people that I connect with. So I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see how many planets this guy's going to destroy before I start representing him. And I was so happy to see the representation of a person of color, of a hero of color, played by Riz Ahmed. Quick note about Rizwan Ahmed. He's amazing. He's a huge advocate for human rights around the world. He's Muslim. He's Pakistani British, so he's a person of two worlds, just like I am, you know, Indian, African, Canadian. Many of us live in two worlds. He embodies that representation so well. And he's even got a line in Rogue One where he talks to Jin and he says, if we listen to our heart, we can make things right. And that's when he's basically turning against the Empire. And you know, he's the first rebel. He's the one who gets the plans to the rebels so they can destroy that big evil thing. So it really, really worked for me. And the word Bodhi is a Sanskrit word for actually meaning enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, christened. Like so it's and Star Wars takes so many Sanskrit and Eastern references. So this character like, He's played by a Muslim, by a Muslim who's proud to be Muslim, who's fighting against Islamophobia. He's a hero. So I felt so happy to see myself represented on screen in a really positive way. I feel obligated to represent both Bodhi Rook and Riz Ahmed to show those heroes of color. And, you know, quick note about Star Wars Celebration in Chicago, where Order 416 had our first booth. It was amazing. And Riz Wan Ahmed was supposed to be there. And there was a huge poster with like every single Star Wars character on it, from the comics, cartoons, and they left off Bodhi Rook for some reason. His name is not on any of the Rogue One DVDs for some reason. And guess what? Riz Ahmed's face was on the magazine that was on the plane, but Riz Ahmed was not allowed on the plane. Because like I said, Islamophobia is a real thing. Discrimination is a real thing. I don't want to get into it too much because you know what it's like. Maybe you don't know what it's like. But he wasn't allowed to come to Star Wars Celebration because people of color face discrimination at airports a lot worse. So I'm really happy that when I get recognized as Bobody Rook because I feel recognized as a person of color, as a Muslim, as a hero, as Rizana, all those things. And it's just so exciting. So I focus on the positivity. So thank you to everybody who recognizes me and just represents that. And before I ramble too much, I'll stop. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to re reiterate that you heard this internal call to represent Bodhi because it meant something. You were called to a larger, a larger meaning and a larger purpose by doing this cos cosplay. And that's how well the hero's journey really resonates. And uh, yeah, so thank you for doing that and to, for raising awareness. I wouldn't have known that if you didn't do that. I'll get into my uh, inner and outer call to cosplay. Uh, 
cost, and I'll make it quick because I, I think this is a shared experience for many of us. We've all lived through a pandemic. It's been two years and change now. And um, there was a, a feeling of isolation and a lot of struggle for my family during the pandemic. My sister is disabled and immunocompromised. It was very difficult for us and cosplay became a coping mechanism for me. And I was actually in, invited to cosplay or I guess initiated uh, by seeing Kareem's cosplays and seeing how he creates that overlap between culture and cosplay. And that really allowed me to see myself um, in, in the fandom. And I, I didn't know much about the fandom movement except for obviously being downtown on random days when you'd see people in costume and wonder what's going on. And that was me ages ago. And, uh, you know, being a new, I guess, person who's initiated into this community, it's, um, it's interesting because when you look at the hero's journey, I would think COVID, this bubble um, that's, that's taking place in our world, is the cave. And um, the fandom has allowed me to step outside of that cave and it's really given me hope. And um, there is also the, the element of escapism, which I think many of you might be familiar with. And then uh, finally, uh, I have a friend named Kyle, who was actually a manager at my work, and he created a superhero or cosplay and um, I guess fandom syllabus for me. <laughs> which is like a couple of pages. So um, I think, I don't want to say male allyship, but just having that kind of mentorship there. Um, I don't think he thinks of himself as an ally, but I think he was being one uh, for this like brown girl with a nerd inside her. And then um, the other pieces, Kareem's cosplays have been an inspiration. And I think Kyle's handholding in the fandom along with seeing Kareem really just made it a reality for me. So with that being said, uh, Din will speak about initiation and we're going to be having a video to show you as well as uh, another little performance, am I right? Oh, and that's that's Daisy Supergirl right there. So you can see the henna on my hand. That's how I made Supergirl my own. Go ahead, Dean. Would you, I, just, I would just like to ask you one quick question. What's up? And uh, we talked a little bit this uh, about this a couple days ago. I just recently met uh, Alia, but we're besties who, now. <laughs> who came into this panel heroically, really, uh, last minute to help moderate and uh, share her story. So she was called to this venture. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think, would you, this is the, the part where you, you're going into initiation and, and once you decide to say yes to this, and sometimes it's, it's represented as an external call where someone will say, will you come with me to do this thing? Will you come with me to this protest or whatever, and you might discover a larger world that way or whatever the thing is. But, um, and then when we do that magically, it always seems to just work out that you start to meet the friends and allies who are gonna help you as, as part of the next steps of the hero's journey and meeting with the mentor. And mentors aren't always just, you know, the kind of serious mentor we go see every week to help us in our career. They could just be little instances of someone who says, hey, come along, this, I've done this, I've mastered this particular thing, or I'm good at this, and I see you want to do it too, I'll help you. So in, in a way, if you don't mind me saying, Kareem has been a bit of a, ment a mentor that way. This human right here. <laughs> and uh, so now we'll get into initiation, uh, like, and, uh, okay, so I was already... Do you want to speak to initiation, or do you want to do your video, um, the Desert Planet music video? No, I, I know what I'm going to say. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the ultimate symbol of initiation, and this is in all the movies we love, um, whether it's Harry Potter going into the cave and first meeting Voldemort in the first movie. Harry Potter fans in here? Oh, yeah. Right, or whether <laughs> Luke in the cave on Dagobah, simultaneously while Hanley and Chewie are in the, the space worm cave. The cave, you're always going to find it in the journey and in your lives. So this COVID thing is really... I was saying this early on, and then all the kind of spiritual people that I kind of read and watch on YouTube started saying the same thing. COVID for us was a global cave, mm -hmm. global belly of the whale. And the meaning of this part of the journey is when you go through the hardships where you're stripped of everything that makes you comfortable in life, you have nothing to see but what's going on inside. And that's where you're gonna find all the strengths that you didn't know you had to deal with whatever the situation is, and also to hear what you want to do. So the cave looks horrible, and it is horrible. COVID has been horrible, but the one benefit of it is it made us all slow down and re really sort of rethink our lives and what we're doing as a planet. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it's universal. So it's in every story, it's in every experience we have, and the whole world just had one together. So I don't know. Do you want to see the video or hear the performance? Hear the performance. Okay. Live is always better. Sounds good in here. How much time do we have? I'm making this short. Play your heart out. Let's get some clapping. talking about you and uh, Kareem and where your trials and where your cave was in this cosplay experience to inspire our audience about where they are in their journey to meet, meet the darkness of their cave and persevere. Perfect. So I'll talk about um, the, the main thing, which is mentors for me. Uh, like I said, Kareem uh, has taken on the role of mentorship. Just even seeing his cosplays and what he does with them, um, super creative. Uh, they end up to be magical and relatable. So seeing that, and then of course, uh, I do follow, um, and I have connected online with uh, Desi cosplayers. So there's Shiva, she's Pakistani, also a teacher, and uh, she does some really creative things. And I also see Modest cosplay. Uh, her Instagram handle is hashtag perpetually single. And I feel like she's a force of nature and really takes ownership of her cosplays and her culture. And then the other one is Mohsen. His Instagram handle is Toronto underscore Aladdin. And it's interesting because he makes Aladdin, he does Aladdin and then uh, Jasmine with Manas Morgul. And his, um, his cosplays, he takes like a Pakistani vest and makes it Aladdin's vest and like a Pakistani hat. So seeing that ownership of, of their culture and kind of combining it with their cosplay, that really helped me. And uh, I hope to one day embody that, that kind of ownership of my identity within my cosplays. I'm still working on it and I'm actively struggling with it. Um, the other thing, uh, I think Din mentioned Carl Jung and um, Jungian philosophy. 
So in uh, Jungian philosophy, there's this idea of the source. And so that's very personal, but I also think it's collective, that what we all kind of tap into the same, I don't know, common space or bubble in this fandom. Like we're all here with a common purpose. And uh, even though we're all very different, it's nice to bring kind of like the subconscious parts of our personality into our cosplays. And it doesn't have to be through culture. It can be through anything. It can be subtle. Like there's a few people sitting in the audience from Order 416. I don't know what parts of their identity are there, but I'm sure they're there. And if I paid attention, I might be able to notice them. Um, and then uh, I guess, I guess, yeah, I, I'm still kind of in the initiation phase. And um, like, what was the hardest, most challenging part practically? Uh, just feeling like I belong and that I that I, I have a space here. I think that's really been a struggle for me. Um, and then the very tangible struggle, which is putting like the construction of cosplays. Um, within the fandom movement. So last night I was actually struggling because I'm like, how do I make this Harley corset more modest? And you know, what do I do? And then I had to try on different things. And um, and then also having elements of my culture, like I'm wearing Fox Sunny earrings, I'll have some Mendy on. Um, maybe I'll do some fun winged eyeliner or some things in my makeup to show like how people in villages do it in Fox Sun. Uh, so again, some of them are very subtle, others are very obvious. And um, I'd like to invite Kareem to speak about his initiation experience. I'm going to say the quickest thing about your, just to tie it into the hero's journey. Yeah. When you go on this larger adventure, adventure into this larger world and you meet all the different people with different beliefs, mm -hmm. you, when you honestly embrace that and go through the trials together, you are then opened up to something called apotheosis, which is just basically that you're going to, through the meeting of others, you're going to get beyond your, your fundamental, your, your one perspective, and you're going to go through a really painful process of understanding more perspectives. So this manifested in your costume, you know, from your religious beliefs to what Harley Quinn was. And yeah, so we, cream. All right, initiation phase. So I'm dressed as Rey from the Star Wars sequels, and Rey is the character that I identified with and got really attached to because her journey inspired me to go deeper in a lot of parts of my life. I've been doing yoga part-time in my side life for a long time, and I've always wanted to dig deeper into it. And hearing the first two words of the Last Jedi trailer when I was at Star Wars Celebration was all I needed to hear. It was Luke Skywalker's voice over a nice, calm ocean. And he said, breathe. Just breathe. Mm -hmm. And like as a Star Wars fan who obsesses over Yoda's teachings, <laughs> it was really great. And I grew up as an Ismaili Muslim, exposed to Sufism, which is mysticism, the belief in a higher power, mindfulness, spirituality. And I get to see Ray going on this similar journey. And I had been planning on quitting my job for so long to just give myself that reward, and then I did it. I had enough savings and privilege to travel. I went to India for six months. Mm -hmm. To dig deep, I studied yoga with the masters, Ayurveda. I was surrounded by the rich cultural and traditions of the scientific study of the human body, mastering the mind-body connection, carrying that sense of awareness, of simple, just breath awareness. Try doing that, it's so hard. Sitting to meditate is extremely difficult, just the sitting part. And that's where yoga comes in, the, the asanas, the physical aspect of stretching the body so that we can sit and then stretching the mind so that we can be aware. And that's Ray's journey, that's the journey of a meditator. And I came back, I became the yoga teacher that I wanted to be for 2019, lived my best life. And I'll also talk briefly about Ahsoka. Ahsoka, sure. Ahsoka is a real person, a real ruler of India back in the day who restored the Vipassana meditation. So just as Ahsoka did it, in Star Wars by breaking away from the Jedi Order and bringing something back. Ahsoka is a real person. Look it up. Vipassana meditation is super powerful. And the higher power exists, and we should realize that we have opportunities to explore it. Nutshell done. Thank you. We want to get Dawn in. So yes. So, five more minutes. Yeah. so what we're going to do is, I mean, there's a few really wonderful um, key quotes. If anyone's um, interested in speaking more about this idea of return, we can chat about that and I'll touch upon it, but I'd like to humbly invite Dom. Uh, Dominic has been wonderful with crafting this entire uh, panel and, and kind of coming up with questions. 
And so, um, Dom, if you could uh, speak, uh, hang on, I have to, sorry. Give me one second. Dom, can you speak into this for me, please? Oh, hello, hello, hello there. Howdy. Um, okay, Dom, so I've got you at the microphone so you can um, speak to our audience, and I'm also going to turn you around, okay? Okay, cool, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it's, I, I, like I said at, off the top, I'm, I'm really sad I couldn't be there, but I, you know, I, I, the hero's journey is, is something that's uh, really important to me. It's something I've, I've really come to love over the years and, and seeing it in Star Wars and, and hearing about how it plays out in everybody's life. And, you know, doing the podcast, I, I find myself in this sort of fun position where I get to go on a little mini hero's journey every week where, you know, every show begins with a literal call of like a, a Zoom call or a Skype call to get all the hosts together to talk about the show. And we, tr we you know, cross the first threshold and go into the belly of the whale when we play the intro because now all of a sudden everything we say it, it, it matters so much more we're not just goofing around amongst ourselves talking about star wars and then the show itself can be as a little road of trials with funny characters and adversaries like technology failing on us at the worst possible time and then at the end of it uh we 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 end the show uh hopefully getting bring everybody together out of a love and a joy uh, of, of celebrating star wars and then we uh, we return home and we we share the episodes out as podcasts that you can download on spotify and apple podcasts or watch on youtube and it's just this little mini uh hero's journey that we get to go on every week and and it's uh it's been so much fun and i'm so thrilled that we found a way to to share it uh, here today at the at, at comic con Thank you, Dom. I'm going to leave you staring at our audience. Dom is literally in the cave right now. Dom, Dominic yeah. is in the cave. So uh, before we uh, transition into our final performance, I do want to speak to this idea of the return. Okay, In Buddhism, there's this um, Mahayana and Theravada Buddhism. And in one of those uh, strands of Buddhism, there's this belief that you become a bodhisattva. So you uh, achieve enlightenment. But are you done? Do you move on to your next lifetime? No, there's a return. You return to teach others, to share what you know. And so the last part of the hero's journey is this return and this idea of becoming master of the two worlds, the spiritual and then the physical world. And um, maybe after this, some of us can chat about what this return has been like for me, but I really want you to hear uh, Din's performance. Uh, so Din and Jody will perform uh, We the Force. And then hopefully in the last minutes, we can take some fantastic questions, comments, and share any of the knowledge and wisdom we have in the audience. So take it away, Din and Jody. You know, we, we've already seen like with even a Kareem story where he came back from his trip to India mm -hmm. and he felt, you know, his response to the call was going on that journey and then coming back to, sh his return journey was then to share this insight he found through the character of Ray Cosplinger and also to share the purpose that he, he found with Bodhi Rook. So, the return journey is essentially, it's always, it's, the, Bo the Buddha didn't want to come back at first because he didn't think, well, if I found this, I've connected to the source, I've, I've experienced that the two worlds are one, and Joseph Sam Cam Campbell says the key to the hero's journey is that the two worlds are one. Mm -hmm. um, so, the nether world of the force and the galaxy, the uh, you know, force ghosts come back and or Luke can manifest on Crate because he's existing physical and and uh, in the other world. But uh, the return is hard for people who, because you know, if you want to come back and give a message, you know, it's going to be hard to to give the message. Or like Jesus, they might crucify you for it, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, or Harry Potter in the Deathly Hallows, you know, he he's in the two worlds and he meets. Uh, Dumbledore and Dumbledore says it's your choice you know here it's basically nice and peaceful but if you go back you're gonna have to face all that stuff with Voldemort and all that so uh, do we have enough time even for this song well we yeah. I say we have a minute and then another buffer of a minute so two minutes cool. maybe I won't do the whole song yeah, maybe so this is called we the force I wrote it to play at Star Wars celebrations so. I want to celebrate how great you are Celebrate with me
I think we got to get out of here now, but happy to talk to anyone. Yes, please, no. please. We're very Comments, approachable. Questions, feedback. Come to us. Talk to us. Okay, thank you so much again. <laughs> Bye, Dom. We'll miss you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Dom. Dom, your, your fans are saying bye. <laughs> bye. Bye, Dom.